Hi everyone, Vega here, and in the next of our Solar System series today we're going to be looking at life on board a moon base, what might be the advantages and disadvantages. So, let's get to it. In 2008, the Indian Chandra Ryan spacecraft discovered water on the moon. It was a game changer because it meant that we could build colonies but wouldn't have to transport water back and forth from planet Earth. Here we see the original Apollo landing sites from back in the 70s. With both China and Japan planning missions, the USA hopes to be the first to establish a colony on the moon with its Artemis plans in 2024. The initial settlement will be a very small affair just like we see in this picture. The moon only has 0.16 g's of gravity and it's enough to hold us to the body and is even more than the surface gravity of larger moons like Ganymede or Titan. It's even believed that there could be thick sheets of ice deep beneath the surface with as much as 10 parts per million H2O in the lunar regolith. Now, 10 parts per million is not very much and is substantially less than even dry desert regions like the Atacama Desert here, as we see, on planet Earth, although it is enough for colonists to synthesize the supply. From the initial colony outwards, we can begin to stretch out and build solar power stations. In this depiction, a small version with small domes, or even we could build underneath the lunar regolith maybe perhaps in lava tubes to protect us from the harmful radiation on the surface. It's thought that around 4 metres of lunar regolith would be enough to protect us. And of course the dosage is actually only half of that that we'd experience in a vacuum. Because underneath, of course, we're protected by the moon itself. Solar power stations have their limits however, and the day-night cycle on the moon of 354 hours would be great for solar power while it's day, but very difficult at night. That's why we believe that some of the best locations on the moon would be inside craters on the north or south poles, where solar power stations could poke above the lunar data and get to 24 hour sunlight and power. Once established, we can begin to dome over larger areas. Hypothetical atmosphere processing stations like this one could provide us with clean air to breathe. Unfortunately, however, with no weather to blunt it, the lunar legolith remains sharp and damaging. The dust is highly ionized and sticks to everything. Many of the Apollo astronauts experience breathing problems. Perhaps what we must do is pave over the floor like we do on much on Earth and at least eliminate some of those dangers within the dome. Unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there. Imagine living in places with corridors a bit like this one. It's innate to the human condition that living in such a place would require very balanced personalities. Claustrophobia and generalization would become huge issues. Initially, no doubt, Travellers and colonists would be elated and enthused, but may soon grow bored with very tired and bleak monochrome and grey settings like the corridors here, or indeed outside on the lunar surface itself. Once we've established that colony under the dome, and the atmosphere processing stations have, have synthesised enough air, perhaps it may even rain on a small scale and the place may become a bit more Earth-like. We do know that bird bacteria can survive without protection on the lunar surface for several years. In fact, one of the Apollo missions brought back a camera that had been on the surface for several years. It was studied and the bacteria survived. No joke, in fact, to say that lunar cheese could be cultivated on the surface of the moon. Maybe after initial simplistic colonies, we can create artificial magnetospheres that could enable us to live outside of the dome. Buildings could then resemble very much those on Earth and indeed higher due to the lower gravity. The magnetosphere would protect us from the harmful radiation. We could plant seeds and crops as shown here, when we know that they were because the Chinese Chang'e 4 mission showed that cotton seeds could be sprouted on the lunar surface. There is of course though a problem in the lack of nitrogen and viable soils. Once we've established this kind of colony, we will inevitably want to spread out further afield. Rough Martian terrain will be difficult in the mountainous regions, with some summits like Mount Huygens reaching it as much as half of that of our own Mount Everest but the so-called seas could provide better terrain for infrastructures. Large-scale road building will require materials, of course, to pave the way for lunar dirt tracks and highways. Initially, it may be traversed by large-scale scouting machineries, but maybe later by modified electric vehicles. Imagine driving down a lunar dirt track. What an amazing experience that would be. Perhaps large-scale telescopic sites could be initial destinations. It's thought the moon would be an amazing place for telescopery, or perhaps even large convoys traversing between lunar settlements. 
Over the next centuries and millennia, the lunar surface, of course, much like our own planet, will slowly begin to light up. Small settlements will initially appear, of course, within craters, but these may give way to larger towns and cities. New paved motorways and highways will replace these dirt and dust tracks. Maybe even super-fast maglev trains will zoom across the seas of tranquility and nectarous and vapor. And of course, from our own planet Earth, with no atmosphere, we'll be able to see all of this very clearly from the comfort of our own homes. Once we've domed over enough of the surface, of course, and maybe one day in the far future, perhaps we may even want to terraform the surface of the moon. It's not impossible. It's thought that a fully terraformed moon could hold on to its atmosphere for maybe tens of thousands of years, which in, of course in planetary terms isn't very long, but it does dwarf our own human lifetimes. Finally, I have a question for you to consider in your, in, in your own time. Could you survive on a lunar base? My own view is that like our own blue planet, I like the safe area that we can breathe and live without cosmic dangers, the greens and beautiful colours of our own planet. For me, at this point, probably outweigh the advantages of living on the moon. The solitude and claustrophobia, of course, I, I probably find really difficult. That said, amongst us are those that seek out challenges and dangers, and of course they'll be the first to live on the lunar surface, the pathfinders for our inevitable expansion out onto our lunar system surface and indeed beyond. Thanks for watching. Of course this is the next episode in our solar system series but you may want to try out other videos like uh, Hellas Planitia which we found is to be one of the most habitable places on Mars where water can actually flow on the surface or maybe uh, Ganymede versus Titan once we've colonised the moon and Mars you might want to see what could happen there. Don't forget of course if you enjoyed the content to add a like or a share because it does help the channel grow somewhat. Stay safe in, in these difficult times that we find ourselves and I'll see you on the next one.